Section 1.7 deals with function notation. In section 1.6, hopefully you got a good handle on what functions are. The rest of this entire course deals with function notation. Now, as you take notes on, on what I put here on the whiteboard or the smart board, we're all used to equations. For instance, an equation that looks something like this. It's got an x and a y in it. This is an example of a linear equation, which we'll talk about in section or in unit two. This is an equation y equals 5x plus 3. Now, we are used to the x and the y as being the x being the input variable and the y being the output variable. In high school mathematics, especially at the advanced level and college level, y, the letter y, is replaced with function notation, which is usually called f of x. And you're going to see in upper level math classes, the equation is written, like I wrote in green, with f of x, which really means the same thing as the letter y. These two are interchangeable, the y and the f of x. But this is function notation to indicate that the particular problem you're dealing with, 5x plus 3, is actually a function. So really, y and f of x are the same. And this is read as the function of x is equal to 5x plus 3. That is how this is read. Now, some other words that are also really, really important. The x is always called the independent variable. y or f of x is many times called the dependent variable because its value, y or f of x, its value depends on whatever numbers that you stick in for x. So therefore, y depends on x or f of x depends on x. So that's another type of notation or words that x and y stand for. Now, let's talk about function notation and how it's used. So there's many problems in mathematics where you have to evaluate. So let's say that you have function notation f of x equals 6x minus 7. And they're going to ask you, what is f of 0? Well, very simply, 0 is the value for x. x, they're telling you with this notation that x is 0. So I just plug 0 into the equation, and I get 6 times 0 minus 7. Six, we all know 6 times 0 is 0 minus 7, and the answer ends up to be negative 7. So f, we would say that f of 0 for this particular problem is equal to negative 7 x, or 0, is the x value, negative 7 would be the y value, or f of x. How about if we write for the same problem, for the same problem, let's do f of 5. It's asking you what is the y value or the output value when x is 5. So therefore, I would take 6 times 5, I put 5 in where the x is, minus 7, and I end up with 30 minus 7, which is equal to 23. And that would be equal to f of 5. Your turn. I would like to know what f of negative 3 is if the function f of x is equal to x squared plus 2. Please stop the video at this time and work this out and then restart it to check your answer. Okay, 
Again, whatever's in the parentheses, when you see this notation, that is the letter or the number for x. So if I want to know f of negative 3, I'm going to put negative 3 right where the x is. And remember from an earlier lesson, we talked about substituting it in parentheses. So negative 3 squared plus 2. We all know negative 3 squared is 9 plus 2 gives us an answer of 11, which is equal to f of negative 3. Negative 3 would be what we call the input or the independent variable. 11 would be the dependent variable, or sometimes we call that the output. Very good. All right, last. The last type of example problem you'll see in section 1.7 has these directions. Graph the function 2x plus 5 for x values that are greater than negative 4 and less than or equal to 2. All right, well, how do we go about doing this? Well, the first thing that we need is a graph. So I'm going to make a coordinate plane. Hopefully, you are making this as well. I apologize for my, my neatness. All right. Now, what I'm looking at right here the, as you learned from an earlier lesson, the x values are the domain. What it's telling me is the lowest number I can use for x is negative 4. So if I evaluate f of negative 4 and I put that into my problem, I find out that my y value is negative 8 plus 5, which is equal to negative 3. So my first point on my graph, x is negative 4, y is negative 3. So I plot negative 4, negative 3, which is about down here. Now, I have a problem with that because I should have looked at this symbol right here, which is strictly less than, which means this should be an open dot because this point is not included in the graph. Now, I look at my highest value of x, which is 2. So now I'm going to put 2 in. So I want to figure out what f of 2 is equal to. And that is 2 times 2 plus 5. So obviously that turns out to be the answer 9. And that would be my highest value. x is 2, y is 9. So I go over to 2, and I'm going to have to make my graph a little bit higher. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This would be 8, and that would be about where 9 is. So I go over to 2 and up to 9, and since it's less than or equal to, I put a closed dot. And then obviously, because all the decimals are included, from that inequality, I can pick any x value in between negative 4 and negative 9, and this is a linear equation, so therefore my graph would be a solid line between those two particular dots. And that is how you graph an equation on that particular interval. Finally, what's the range? Well, we learned that the range goes from the lowest y value, which we found out is negative 3, to the highest value, which would be 9. So therefore, my y values go from negative 3, and since that is an open dot, it's less than y, which is less than or equal to positive 9, because that is a filled-in dot. And that would be my range from the low value up to the high value. And that is how you use function notation to graph and solve problems.